Hello, something a little bit different today in the form of this tiny little charger. It's a USB charger. Um, and I was quite interested in it because I thought, you know, it wouldn't be your main charger, but for if you're ever going away and just wanted to charge something up quickly, uh, then this might be something useful. First thing I've got to do is get it out of the box. Okay, there's not much to see inside, literally. It's the charger. And that's it, that's all there is to it. You've got USB-C in there. You've got XT60 and balance out there. You've got a couple of buttons to basically select the type of battery. You've got select your charge current and it will basically charge up a battery. It doesn't do anything fancy. It doesn't storage charge or anything like that. So it's a very sort of basic but inexpensive way of charging up a battery. Uh, I suppose you'd say on the go as opposed to being your main charger. But simple and easy uh let's go to close up and see if we can test it out and charge up some batteries okay so here's the little isdt pd60 in it, all its detail you see there's not much to it it's basically got holes for cooling it's got the select button here for your battery type and your charge and it's basically got a start or pause there the percentage of how full the battery is and it's got charge charge complete and error lights to light up so i'm going to plug this in and i'm going to pretend sort of you know I was like in a car or something, so I'm just going to use this power bank, which I think is a reasonable way of sort of simulating what you might be doing. Plays a little tune for us. And what you can then do, it's, let me turn these lights down a bit because it's not that bright. It's bright enough to see, but if you've got very big lights on it, it's not good. So a little press of this will change the power, 1 amp to 6 amps, and a longer press changes the battery type, so you've got LiPo, LiPo, high voltage, life, and NIMH. So I'm gonna try charging with this rather knackered looking 4S um, 1.3 amps from 2016. And what you've got there is the XT60 output and you've got two to 4S that it can charge. And the way I'm gonna measure this, because one thing I figure about if you're using these, one of the worries is, is it gonna balance accurately? Um, I'm going to use this charger, which I use quite a lot and I trust. I'm going to plug this in now, see what it says. And that's saying there that this was in storage, so we got like 3.82, 3.81, 3.82, 3.82, 3 so around 3.8. And then I'm going to charge this battery up, plug it back in here and see if the cells will come back balanced essentially. Now it says this does balance charge it, in fact that's the only option. So um, all should be good. Of course, one thing we can't do is quite charge it at 1C because this is a 1.3 and we only got the option of uh, one amp or two amps. Of course, we don't want to go to two amps because that would be like close to 2C. So we can see here now the battery's plugged in. It says, yeah, it's about 40% full. So I'm just going to press the button and that will start charging it. I can stop at any time just by pressing pause. But we'll press that and uh, we'll see what happens. I will time this to see exactly how long it takes. So uh, I'll start my stopwatch and we'll see. I expect it to take, well, a little bit over an hour, I guess, to put 1C, because it's less than 1C charging at one amp. But uh, we'll find out, I'll come back and see. Okay, it is done. I didn't notice actually, I thought there might be a beep or something, but there's not, there's just a tick there. You can see that the power lights come up. It's been going for, an hour and seven. I last looked over about five minutes ago and it wasn't done, so I, I might be a couple of minutes out, but whatever, it, it's done. So do I have to press pause or? Yeah, I guess so. So let's unplug this now, pop it in the other charger and see what the cells look like. Okay, just gonna plug this guy in, see what we get. Four point one eight, four point one nine, four point one seven, four point one seven. It's not bad. It's about zero point two volts ish out. So not massively out, but it hasn't balanced up brilliantly. If I just plug it in this one and ask it to balance, let's see what this comes up with. The uh, difference between this uh, cheaper charger and a, and a proper charger. Okay, so we put an extra three minutes in and 28 milliamp hours to get everything to 4.2. Cell four was a bit problematic, it kept dropping under. Maybe this is where this little one struggled and, and couldn't do it, but uh, this one succeeded. But yeah, it was uh, relatively close. 0.03-ish out 
between the cells depending, whereas this is 0 0.002 out between each other. So, but you know, this is a lot more expensive and good. This is what you might use in a bit of a push. Well, this is kind of interesting. I really like the fact it's USB and yet it can still charge up like a 4S battery, uh, not a problem. And of course, USB connections are everywhere and even sort of 2.1 amps upwards, um, all the sort of phone chargers have them, lots of cars have them. My power bank does it, not a problem. So I like the fact this is about, you can go anywhere and still have your battery charged. And I kind of think that's the use case for it because this doesn't stand up as its own sort of charger. Because you can only charge in one, two, three, and six amps. Um, and it doesn't really let you, to, you know, I, I've got lots of 4S 850, so I wouldn't want to charge those at one amps. And you know, all my 1.3 or 1.5 or 1.8, I'd have to charge slower than I would normally. And of course it doesn't have any discharge or storage charge. So it doesn't stand up there. It has a very specific use case, I think. And that's when you're sort of on the go and you really need to get a battery charged uh, but you know you're not in the situation where you've got like maybe a great big like 6s or something that you'd plug into a regular charger and charge it that way so the fact you can be sort of in the car and plug something in and have maybe a couple of batteries charged as you're driving along is really quite cool i like that this is something i can imagine putting in my bag for those occasions when it's just like oh i just need to do one more battery there's there's another flying spot over there and i'm out of batteries charge one up as we drive there brilliant as a sort of regular charger, it's not there yet, but perhaps there'll be a version two where you can charge a little bit more accurately so you can charge at 1.3 amps or something like that, and you can actually discharge it. Discharging's tricky because they need something, uh, basically a big sort of a resistor to, to put all the heat in and that has to escape somehow, but you could, you could, I'm sure you could do something with that. One thing it has got going for it though, is it's pretty, pretty cheap. It's like 12 pounds uh, in the UK, which I guess is about 15, 16 dollars. I haven't looked at the exchange rates recently. So, and that's why it becomes kind of useful and kind of something that I might have in my bag if I'm driving around um, and I sort of think, actually, I'll just do one more battery. I'll plug it in on the way and do it. So there is that, it's cheap. And maybe there's a case here for if you wanted to charge a lot of batteries, but you only had a single charger, you, you may have a bunch of these, you'd charge them up. You could always finish them off with your proper charger if you're worried about the balancing not quite being right. That's maybe something there, but anyway, this has been the IDST and UR UAV PD60 and was kind of supplied for review by Banger, so thanks very much to them. And of course you can find links down below for where you can find this in more detail. In the meantime, I hope that's been helpful and I will catch you next one. Bye for now. Well, you've made it to the end of the video, so thanks once again for watching. If you like what you saw, then please consider subscribing. And if you really like what you saw, then be sure to check out the link to my blog for a variety of ways in which you can help support this channel.